Ever since I got this $200 laptop, I've been shocked at how well it has been able to keep up with my day-to-day -day tasks even with its rather poor specifications. The Intel Atom 1.33GHz processor, 2GB of RAM, and a 32GB SSD has been able to keep up with most of my multitasking and homework needs. But the task I've mentioned so far isn't very intensive. So what happens when I try to up the level and try to make this my main machine by trying to edit a 1080p video on it? So let's find out. Welcome to the Access Project. With trace of the night on the way back down. Now first off, the editing software. I had so much trouble trying to find a program that would just plain work on this machine. Now the hardware is 64-bit compatible, but it is running 32-bit Windows due to compatibility with Intel's connected standby feature. And while this does not really matter in everyday tasks, it made finding an NLE very annoying as most video editing programs such as my personal favorites, HitFilm 2 slash 3 Express, Premiere Pro, all require a 64-bit OS. So with my choices narrowed down greatly, I ultimately settled on Sony Movie Studio Platinum 13. It was touted as a light and touchscreen friendly version of the professional video editing software, Sony Vegas, and looking through its feature list, it looked quite capable. Support of up to 20 video tracks, lots of effects including a very good color corrector with automatic color matching between scenes, tons of audio effects, image stabilization, chroma key, support of a lot of frame rates, plugins, proxy files, and a wide range of codec support with the only weird one lacking is Wave. And considering I found a 50% discount code on Sony's website, bringing the already reasonable $80 price down to $40, it seemed like quite a lot of bang for one's buck. And it's even cheaper on Steam actually, but it's only the 64-bit version. Grr. Now granted, the UI, dang ugly, and the touchscreen friendly buttons make everything way bigger than it needs to be on a non-touchscreen device with no option to make it smaller. But the user interface was really easy to transition from Premiere Pro and I found myself not taking long to figure out how the interface worked. But this isn't a review of Movie Studio, that's coming another time. The question is, can the Atom keep up once I import some footage? I plugged in my memory card and decided to directly import the videos into Movie Studio without copying it onto my laptop. Yes, I know this is not very good in terms of performance, especially with my super slow card reader, but hey, it can't really help with not much free space and it allows for the portability of projects which I'll talk about later. Importing the clips into the timeline and hitting play, and surprisingly, at half playback resolution, I could play it back at 24fps, no drop frames. But okay, alright. That's not really a hard thing to do, it's just playing back. So let's throw in some colour correction. A little bit of stutter started appearing, but it was still very workable even when I was playing back footage at 2 times speed to edit quicker. I was very surprised. Remember, there is no background transcoding like there is on Final Cut Pro X, and I'm not using proxy files here. I'm just editing off the heavily compressed ABCHD footage. And also, this CPU steps only 2.2 watts, half of which the MacBook with the Core M consumes, half the power needed to power a USB device, and just a mere two times the power needed to power this LED light. And this processor, according to Intel, only costs like 20 bucks, and it's not even a that new of a processor. Quite impressive for such a low-end CPU. So let's try editing a whole Access Project episode on it. So I did. In fact, the whole Access Project video you saw uh, last week, I think, was edited on it and it was very workable. Granted, I could not stress it out totally and apply all the effects I wanted due to time restrictions and this being a new software that I'm learning, but I ultimately got the video out with quite a fair bit of effects put on top of it. Really not bad and shows how capable this small machine is. So Adriel, there's no need to buy a high-end computer now for video editing, right? Because an atom is all you need, right? Absolutely not. First off, there are a lot of laptops, desktop, and computer systems you can get for this price point, $200, and get better performance when it comes to video editing. And that is not to say the process of editing video on this guy was smooth. It was not. Movie Studio crashed a lot, though from what I'm hearing, this is kind of a common problem with Sony Vegas. And applying effects like audio EQs, a lot of B-roll, I had a lot of B-roll in my timeline, uh, video stabilizers, uh, color correction, 
uh, started to make the video preview stutter a lot more to the point where I decided to drop down the quality from half resolution to quarter in order to get a smooth 24 frames per second preview experience. And a quarter preview, while workable, it's pretty ugly. Stabilization and analyzation took a very long time, and the final result was a rather stuttery playback experience. And I could not stop Movie Studio from crashing at export due to out of memory issues. I had to disable dynamic RAM preview, which freed up a bit more memory for it to finally be able to complete the export. And even when it was exporting, it took an awful long time. My 1080p 12 megabit 6 minute clip took about 1 hour to render. This is mostly due to the fact that Sony Vegas isn't that fast at exporting. There was no graphics acceleration as well, even though this laptop does have Intel Quick Sync, it did not work properly. So yeah, not great. But is the power of this laptop enough for uh, the casual person who wants to edit a family video? In my opinion, yeah. Granted, render times, awful. But things like color corrections, advanced cuts with lots of b-roll, and image stabilization does work ultimately and you can ultimately export the file. And that in my opinion shows that the Intel Atom is actually not that bad of a processor unlike uh, what a lot of people think. It's actually mm, quite capable to actually be able to edit 1080p video. And if you're wondering if I'm going to continue editing video on this laptop, the answer is probably yes because if I need to edit something quickly outside, I can and if I save everything on this thumb drive or SD card, I can just plug it into my main computer when I'm at home and then I can export at a rather fast rate. So yeah, not that bad. Product portability, very nice. So thank you guys so much for watching this little video. Uh, were you surprised that this laptop could handle video editing? Uh, I was personally. Let me know down in the comments and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye!